Hi, this is Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at InterArbor Solutions, and you're listening to Briefings Direct. Our next business digital transformation panel discussion explores the ways that rapidly evolving technology are impacting the future of procurement, the advent of increased automation, data-driven decisions, powerful business networks, and the firepower of artificial intelligence and blockchain are combining to elevate procurement and the professionals who drive it to a new plane of greater influence and impact. To learn more about how procurement is reaching an increasingly strategic position in businesses, I'm pleased to introduce you to our panelists. We're here with Julie Gerberman. She's the Vice President of Digital Transformation Organization at SAP Ariba. Welcome, Julie. Thanks, Dana. We're also here with Shivani Gauvel. She's the Vice President of Artificial Intelligence and Cognitive Products at SAP Ariba. Welcome, Shivani. Thanks, Dana. Delighted to be here. And we're also here with Matt Volker. He's Vice President of Supply Chain at Nature Suite, and they're based in San Antonio, Texas. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Dana. My pleasure. We're glad to have you here. Julie, let's start with you, if you don't mind. Uh, SAP Ariba has published recently a point of view on what procurement will look like, supposedly, in 2025, several years out. And it's um, far from procurement as we know it today. So paint us a picture, if you could, about what you think we should be expecting when it comes to procurement over the next several years. Well, Dana, we expect that we are on the brink of more change than ever before for procurement. We think procurement organizations are going to rethink everything um, from technology to resource allocation, talent, skill sets, can entirely remake the function. Um, and how they'll do that, that means a few things. First, they're going to leverage new and emerging technologies to automate the mundane tasks to focus on more strategic work and become a key driver of corporate goals and business innovation. And how they're going to do that is use intelligent systems that are self-learning to provide a consumer-like, highly personalized user experience that will make purchasing easy. We also believe that procurement will become ambassadors of the brand for their companies. And unlike in the past, all companies want to do well financially. But we believe procurement can help them do good, and we're going to see more and more of that in the future, where they become the stewards of the corporate reputation and brand perception by ensuring a sustainable supply chain. And in the future, procurement is going to get even more collaborative to achieve the cost-saving goals, and that means companies will be connected like never before, leveraging networks. So they're going to take the lead in driving collaboration and using networks to connect buyers, partners, suppliers globally for efficiency. And on the tech side, we believe super networks may emerge to create value. Networks will need to network with other networks, and this hyper-connected ecosystem will become a standard. So we are really excited about the future. Finally, data is the new currency. And buyers and sellers are going to leverage things that I believe Shivani will be talking about, like predictive uh, analytics, real-time insights, AI, blockchain, and all of that to move the business forward. So we're really excited about the future of procurement. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we've talked about this before at a, a different environment, but adoption and the pace at which people can change in order to acknowledge these technical changes and to also put in place the organizational shifts, it, it takes time. It's a journey. So... What can companies be doing now to think about how to be a, a leader rather than a laggard when it comes to this procurement overhaul? That's such a great question. Adoption has to be the key focus, and every company will start at a different place and probably move at a different pace, and that's okay. What we see is the focus on their business outcomes is the difference to have successful adoption, right? So that focus on outcomes, and then supporting that is the organizational design, the resource allocation, the talent that's needed on the people side. Mm -hmm. And finally, leveraging the right technology to help drive that adoption at the pace that's desired is key. So those are kind of the core components mm -hmm. for adoption. So a multifaceted approach, uh, complex, but with the potential for huge payoffs. So let's go to Matt uh, at Nature Suite. Uh, you're well on your way to seeing procurement as, as a strategic element in your company. Uh, tell us about your transformation, what your company does, and how procurement has become uh, more of a, a kingpin uh, to how you succeed. We have 9,000 associates across our operations, and we consider them our competitive advantage. And that's because people create the uh, expertise at the greenhouse between 
growing and harvesting techniques. Now, with that said, our intentions are to bring innovation to the table to allow them to work smarter versus uh, harder. And what that entails is technology. So as an example, currently we have five different initiatives that are linked to automation and system solutions. And uh, SAP Ariba SNAP happens to be one of those initiatives. In that world, we're creating a heck of a lot of change management around processes, people's accountabilities, shifting from a transactional solution in procurement to a strategic sourcing play. And just for uh, edification of our audience, tell us about Nature Sweet. You're an innovative grower of vegetables and other uh, organic produce. Yes, it's fresh produce, produce products, predominantly in tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers, both conventional and organic. And our play is into North America, which is Canada, Mexico, and the U.S., with a branding of products that cross a spectrum of small, large tomatoes, uh, varieties of peppers, varieties of cucumbers. Very good. Now that you've put this in place, it's been a, a bit of a journey, as we said, and it takes time. What are the demonstrable benefits? What can you point to and say, aha, by being strategic, by being uh, innovative with technology and partners, I guess, at Ariba, we're accomplishing blank. Being in mid-market and produce, we were sort of uh, in a position where the sky was the limit. And what I mean by that, in a transactional world, uh, we had basic processes that were not in place down to identifying item numbers and stock items for a broad range of purchases across 8,000 different uh, commodity items. What that led us to do is the due diligence to be able to identify what those items were, which then drove us to category management, you know, siloing specific purchases into categories and then uh, applying our resources against those categories. The net result was, that, again, we moved from transactional to strategic sourcing, and we didn't know what we didn't know. Once we brought Ariba Snap into internally into our operation and had access to 3 million plus vendors, it provided us visibility to worldwide uh, opportunities across uh, each of those categories. So it was uh, a benefit both on spend uh, as well as services and products available. And uh, just to be clear, the SNAP is an initiative to help small and medium-sized businesses uh, become purveyors of the top-line technology and processes when it comes to procurement. Uh, in this case, size doesn't matter. Okay, Shivani, let's talk a little bit about uh, companies like Nature Suite. They want to be thinking about the top-line capabilities of AI and machine learning, but perhaps they don't want to take that on as a core competency. It's really outside their, their wheelhouse. How can an organization like SAP Ariba, uh, tackle the complexities of these technologies, get the deep data, and then help companies like NatureSuite accomplish their goals? Yeah, great great question, Dana. So, you know, if you think about what we uh, do at SAP Ariba, we are enabling transactions across over 3 million buyers and suppliers and over $1.6 trillion in value across the network. So you think about that statistic and you think about how much data that means that resides across our network in our systems. Um, and what we're looking at is applying AI and machine learning type technologies to unlock the value of that data and deliver actionable insights to companies such as Nature Suite so that they can perform and do their functions better. So our focus is really looking at the technology and how can we apply those technologies to be able to deliver value to the end user. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to bring together better connections between the people, the processes, the systems, the data, and the context or intent of the user in, in order to enable them to deliver their jobs better. Mm -hmm. And looking to this initiative about pre <laughs> predicting through 2025 how procurement will change, tell us a little bit about how you see the technology supporting that. What is it about these new technologies that you think are going to be an accelerant to this big change in procurement? 
Yeah, I see the technology as being a key enabler to help make that transformation happen. Um, in fact, a lot of it is happening around us today already. So, you know, I think some of us can point to um, looking, watching science fiction movies or looking at cartoons like the Jetsons where they talk about a future age of flying saucers, flying cars and robot maids and uh, moving roadways. And, you know, if you look around us, that's all happening today. We have self-driving cars. We have companies working on flying cars. Uh, we have the robot vacuums. So technology has really became, become the enabler to allow people to think, act, and behave in very, very different ways than before. Um, and that's what we're seeing happening around us. Um, for those folks that might not be data scientists or even are interested in becoming data scientists, uh, the way the mainstream folks are understanding AI and bots and uh, machine learning are through sort of the, um, the voice recognition technologies like Siri and Alexa, for example. What is it about those that we might want to educate people? Is this so just an interface? Is it more than that? How can your average business person, line of business person, appreciate the power of what AI can do on the back end, not necessarily the interface, but that cloud network capability? Yeah, so Alexa and Siri, I think, are just have become household names, and everyone is familiar with the, with those types of technologies. Those are the conversational interfaces that enable us to have interactions with our applications in a seamless manner, as if we're talking to a friend or trying to get something done. Um, when we think about this whole space of technology and AI and machine learning, you know, we span across multiple, multiple different types of technologies: uh, the natural language processing, um, the speech to text, text to speech. Those are the types of technologies that are used in the conversational interactions. And then you have things like machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, etc., that provide insights, being able to span across large amounts of data and deliver insights and uncover hidden patterns to enable better business outcomes. So let me give you an example. You know, we think about Siri and Alexa in our everyday life. Imagine a, an intelligent assistant on the sourcing solution guiding a category uh, owner through the process they have to do in order to run a sourcing event. Um, so, you know, really helping the uh, category owner understand and get intelligent uh, recommendations as to what should they be doing all through conversational type of interactions. Now, if you take that even further, where I talk about some of the other types of technologies, you can think about the fact that companies get thousands of invoices today, and how do you actually go through those invoices and, are, and then classify them so that you can understand what your spend categories are and do analysis around it to get a better handle on your spend. Um, and we're applying techniques like deep learning and convolutional neural networks to be able to automatically start classifying those invoices into the right spend categories. Um, and by doing so, we've seen that it can save people from what used to take days to less than 10, 11 minutes in order to do the task. I want to come back to some of that, but in, first I'd like to do a little reality check um, with Matt. You've heard some of these AI capabilities. Does this resonate with you? And was I right? Uh, I didn't overstep my bounds in, in assuming that you wouldn't want to be in the AI business. But how, how does this settle with you guys? You're really excited about it, and do you prefer to see a company like SAP Ariba tackle this first and foremost? Absolutely. You know, our long-term strategy is to become a consumer products group company, and that places us in the same uh, conversation as folks like Procter & Gamble, Hershey, PepsiCo. And so that's a stretch uh, because if you consider produce, traditionally it's a commodity market driven on uh, on temporary workforces that are migratory by nature. That's not who we are. We are a branded company. Our uh, claim to fame in the marketplace is that we have the best products on the market, uh, always at the same price, always available, 100% uh, vertically integrated in a direct relationship with Anna. Why I mention that is for us to continue to excel at uh, our growth potential, uh, the need of automation, AI, and digitizing processes are critical to our success. So in my mind, from a supply chain perspective, we're building toward an end-to-end -end integrated supply chain, uh, and we must have that link of a qualified tool in procurement to uh, make that a successful transformation. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Shivani, we've heard also people are a little concerned. They're worried that their jobs are going to get taken over by a robot. Uh, we don't expect necessarily that 100% of buying is going to be done automatic by some algorithm, but there's got to be a balance. You want to automate as much as you can, but you want to bring in people to do what they do best. Is there anything about your view towards 2025 that addresses this idea of the right mix of people and machines mm -hmm. to leverage each other to the mutual benefit of the business? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me state, but uh, let me say that we don't think technology is going to replace humans. Um, in fact, what we think is happening is that technology is augmenting the abilities of the humans to be able to do their jobs better. And the way we look at these types of technologies, they really allow the procurement professionals to be smarter, uh, faster, and more efficient in terms of what they're doing. Um, so let me give you an example of what I mean by that, right? You know, we're, we all know that digitization has happened. Paper invoices, for example, are a thing of the past. Now imagine if you can also add the digital, you know, what's stored on digital in digital records to also being able to get insights from that. So let's say there's a drop in commodity prices and you be able to intelligently give the contract negotiator the advice that it's time for them to negotiate a contract as well as provide benchmarks and insights into what kind of prices they should be looking for. So what we do is the way we're approaching this is we're looking at the type of user and the type of task they're performing and based on that there are different ways in which these types of technologies can help. So if you take a user that's a casual user and the task is a very repetitive task like a customer support type activity where the questions are fairly generic, you know, commonly asked questions. Can, can you look at automating those types of tasks? So in that case, we would look at automation type functions. Um, on the other hand, you might have expert users that are doing a very uh, deep, complex task, which is very variable, like for example, the contract negotiation. Can you then help, how do you then use these technologies to help that contract negotiator and be able to amplify what they're doing and get even better results out for the business? So really, depending on the type of user, whether they're a casual or an expert user, and the type of task, whether it's a repetitive task or a highly variable, unique, customized task, we look at these types of technologies enabling in different types of ways. Mm -hmm. Julie, it seems to me that for organizations to prepare themselves to be ready to make that right call between what machines can do so well in enabling the people and the people elevating themselves mm -hmm. to a strategic level, getting out of the rote business, um, requires a digital transformation of the organization, the people, the process, and the technology. Is there anything that you can offer from what you've seen in preparing the 2025 vision that um, would give organizations an idea of how to get digital first in order to be able to take advantage of automation and intelligence when it comes time to do that. Sure, Dana. So what we've seen in doing the research is that it's at three structural levels. First, at the corporate procurement level um, and addressing risk and security and thinking actually about the experience of satisfaction. And then at the business unit level, we're seeing uh, procurement get more embedded into the business unit and to actually work more closely um, in a line of business in a production or manufacturing facility to be closer to the line of business and that then helps the transformation. And then finally at the shared services level a lot of what Shivani was referring to some of those rote mundane tasks being digitized they become more arbiters of satisfaction to the end user really to to be overseeing and uh, the digitization rather than performing the tasks themselves. So to get on that journey of the corporate level, then the business unit, line of business procurement, to get more embedded, and then finally shared services. We're viewing things in the future as like complete lights out facilities, right? Which then would, would change the dynamic. Mm. You know, it's interesting to me that this can be quite easily customized. That is to say, you could be a smaller organization, a giant enterprise across different vertical industries, different geographies of the world, because the way that you enter this is your own trajectory. It's unique. It's custom. But the way that you can 
uh, consume services and start to layer in more use of AI and automation uh, can be done at your pace. But one of the things we've seen is that the pace has been slower than we expected. I guess we're sort of banging on the same drum here, but what is it that organizations should be thinking about? And maybe, Matt, you have some ideas from your organization's experience that can increase the pace of adoption when it comes to digital transformation, automation, and ultimately robots and AI and, and, and artificial intelligence benefits. As an organization, we pride ourselves in being transformational. And how we begin that process is saying we're transforming the lives of our associates. In our world, again, there's 9,000 people that we want to lift their living standards. And from that, uh, it develops a strategy to say, how do you go about doing that? Well, it's about transformation. So through automation and system solutions, we intend to get there by December 31st, 2019. Uh, allowing them to work smarter. It was referenced earlier by Shivani that you move folks away from transactional to strategic sourcing through categorizing your vendor community and allowing them to say, now I can move away from requisitions and purchase orders to really searching globally for partners that will allow us to accelerate our spend, uh, spend the right way both from a cost, service, and quality perspective. Now, Shivani, we've been um, looking at this in the future, but let's just go short term for a second. In my experience with software development and moving from uh, traditional software to the cloud, it was really important to demonstrate uh, upfront benefits that you could show and demonstrate business benefits, productivity benefits that would then accelerate the adoption. While we're still looking several years out, what can be done around AI, machine learning, and data analysis now that would help accelerate, uh, become an, a catalyst to, to the adoption and, and the benefits that would be further down the line? Um, yeah, great question. And, you know, we're, we're seeing the value of some of these technologies manifest in many different ways. Um, I actually largely put them into four buckets. Um, the first one is really around driving deeper engagement and user adoption. So if you imagine having these types of conversational interactions, intelligent assistance that really drives the engagement and adoption by the end user of using the systems and, you know, bringing more spend under management, getting the better outcomes for the business that you're trying to decipher, um, trying to deliver. So that's number one. The second one is in terms of being able to unlock the data and discover hidden patterns or insights that you don't have access to otherwise. Um, and if you think about it, there's so much data that exists today, whether it's in your structured enterprise systems or your unstructured um, systems out in the web, on social media, uh, different sources. Um, by being able to bring those data elements together and understanding the context and what the user is trying to achieve, you can actually help discover patterns or trends and enable the user to do their jobs even better. You know, I talked about the sourcing um, contracts, negotiations. Um, you can think about it in terms of ethical sourcing and how do you find the right types of suppliers that are ethically appropriate for your business. Um, so that's the second one is around unlocking the data and discovering hidden patterns and insights. The third one is around uh, driving deeper engagement and, uh, I'm sorry, driving retention of talent and knowledge. So, you know, a lot of uh, companies are facing this um, aging workforce where people are starting to retire and you don't want the knowledge that they have to go with them. You want to retain that in your business and your applications. So these types of technologies enable that to happen um, and also it allows you to attract new talent because everyone wants to work with the latest and greatest technologies and so this is, becomes a way for new talent to get attracted to your business. And the fourth and most important is around driving better business outcomes. This can be in the form of efficiency, it can be in the form of automating repetitive tasks, or it can be in the form of driving increased accuracy. And together, these allow you to then start creating that strategic value for procurement as a function and become a value creator for the business. Mm -hmm. Julie, you had some other thoughts, too, on accelerating the adoption? I do. I do. Because so much of what we're talking about, this amazing technology, it can only be successful through effective change management at the organization. Mm -hmm. So it's in that process and the people side that if you embrace the technology, that's fabulous. But structuring the organization and supporting and enabling folks, whether they're users, category managers, sourcing managers, to then 
adapt to the change and right and lead through that change and the support at the highest levels we've seen really effective in driving successful digital transformation mm -hmm. through that change management. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, we're almost out of time. So for our last question, I'd like to go around the panel. Um, we've often seen patterns where um, it takes longer for change to happen than we thought, but that the impact is even greater than we anticipated. So looking out several years for an understanding of what that greater impact might be, um, my final question all is, what's it going to be like in 10 years? What will be astonishing to us today about how procurement is in sort of the usual day-by-day -day occurrences in, in, I say, 10 years from now? Let's start with you, Matt. So in our world of produce, uh, it's about the investment. So as land and resources become more scarce, we need to be much more productive from the standpoint of being able to deliver a highly perishable mix of products uh, with a speed to market. And so in our, what we believe is part of the solution is automation, AI, and digitizing processes because it's going to allow us the opportunity uh, to consistently reinvent ourselves just like any other organization. And so with that, it maintains our competitive advantage in the marketplace. And so we are extremely well suited to, you know, really pull the consumer and customer along with us in an emerging economy uh, that uh, is uh, speed of market and flexibility is mandatory. Julie, same question. What's going to be astonishing to us about how procurement has changed and how organizations are changed by procurement 10 years out? I actually think it's the people side, and I'm most passionate about this. The organizations will look completely different, and the people in them will be data scientists, strategic consultants, people that perhaps we never had the opportunity because we were so focused on executing the tasks that are associated with procurement. But now the organizations and the people and the talent that will be in there will be completely astonishing to us today. Sort of force multipliers, right? Absolutely. Giovanni, same question. What's going to astound us 10 years out? Yeah, I do agree with Julie on the people side of it. I also think that the technologies are going to enable new things to happen than what we can ever imagine today. You know, if you start thinking about, we talked a lot about AI and machine learning. You think about blockchain and the possibilities that opens. You think about 3D printing, uh, drones. You know, you can imagine where, you know, in sometime in the near future, rather than sourcing parts and materials, you might be sourcing designs and then printing it locally and you might have a drone that's delivering it from a local 3D printer to your facility in an as-needed manner with no advanced ordering required, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, it's just going to be amazing to see where this combination of technology and skills is going to take the procurement function. Well, very good. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. You've been listening to a Briefings Direct discussion on how procurement is advancing to become a strategic force multiplier for corporations as they seek a digitization of their overall businesses. And in examining the Procurement 2025 initiative, we've learned how modern procurement has emerged as a key component to overall digital business transformation. So, Please join me in thanking our guests. We've been here with Julie Gerdeman. She's the Vice President of Digital Transformation Organization at SAP Ariba. Thanks. Thanks so much. Pleasure to be here. And we've been here with Shivani Govil. She's the Vice President of Artificial Intelligence and Cognitive Products at SAP Ariba. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dana. I really enjoyed it. And lastly, we've been here with Matt Volker, Vice President of Supply Chain at Nature Suite. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dana. A pleasure as well. And a big thank you as well to our audience for joining us. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inner Arbor Solutions, your host throughout this series of SAP Ariba-sponsored Briefings Direct discussions. Thanks again for listening, and do come back next time.